2012, but open to all and quite literally bikes and cars, rally cross, you name it. And today it's the turn of SVRA, a little bit of classic vintage car racing. And I say a little bit, it's the biggest event in the United States. We have over 300 cars here for the U.S. Vintage National Championship. It's known as the Speed Tour. And one of the top men involved in getting it all together, he pretty much does every job except drive the cars, and that is Ben Sizzle. Uh, and Ben, um, well, another group, another bunch of different, very different cars. Um, tell us a little bit more about what we've got about to see in action. So it looks like this is our group 5, 8, 7, and 11. Uh, the only group 11 car that I think, well, no, we've got two group 11 cars, but that Audi R8 of Travis Engen, which is a 2005 Audi R8, part of the team that won Le Mans, I think, three years in a row. Um, Travis Engen's going to be driving that car, but then we've got a lot of sports racers, which is some of our most competitive. You can see in the background there, there's a Radical. I uh, can't see a number on that, but that's what's called a Radical. You can see Jessica Jonk. We were talking about her taking pictures. There's a number 89 of a Sports 2000 racer, one of our most competitive classes in vintage racing. It's basically uh, two-liter go-karts with a little bit of body work. And um, so all the cars are set up very equally. It's a driver's class, really fun. Speaking of drivers, we've got second-place finisher from the Group 1, 3, 4, 5 race, Rob Davenport in here. Tell us about what you're thinking when you're sitting at the false grid before a race. Nerves really aren't too uh, too intense. I think I get more nervous getting suited up, you know, 30, 45 minutes prior to a race. But you're pretty you're pretty laser focused down there. So tell us about you know you're in that uh, 210. It has a ton of history. You're out there racing wheel to wheel. We were talking about how beautiful the Alfa Romeo was that you raced with us at VIR. It was uh, at Indy a few years ago when we had just met. We were sitting at an auction, and I was talking to you about how many cars you have. Then you just start raising your hand, and you buy another one. Well, how no, many cars do you have? That was that was a friend of mine that bought three cars at that auction. I only have the B210, which is a 1973 Datsun B210. That's my dad's three-time national championship car. I've got a 1972 Alfa Romeo GTB, car, which is the car that he started racing and vintage racing after his after his SCCA days and IMSA days ended. Uh, and then I've got a little 67 Alpha Duetto that I cruise around in the neighborhood. So just three cars. Well, let me ask you about that, Datsun, because, um, you know, you said it's a three-time national winning car. And, you know, I've been asking Ben the same question. How different in terms of preparation, in terms of what you can and can't use, are the car that your father drove and the car that you're driving now? I would say it is very, very, very similar. Uh, there may be a few changes here and there, but really it's pretty much the exact same car as when the car rolled off of Road Atlanta in 1979 after my dad had won his third national championship. So here's what's interesting about the B210, and not many people realize this. It was actually a more successful SCCA championship car than the 510. Wow. I so the B210 won the national championship in 74 with Devendorf behind the wheel, in 75 with Devendorf, 76 with Damon Pleasant, Dick Davenport, 77, 78, 79. That's six years in a row Wow, for a B210. Now, I don't think a Datsun 510 won six in a row. No. So what is the platform? Tell us what, what size engine is it? Okay, what kind so of chassis? Okay, so back then they started off with 1,300cc motors back in probably 74. Uh, 75, and then they eventually went to a 1,400cc motor. And then uh, they could climb up to a 1,500cc motor in 79, and of course then the classes changed when they went to the GT5, GT4, GT3, and 80, etc. So, you know, it's a 1,500cc motor in that car. It puts out about 175 more. It weighs uh, about 1,720 pounds without driver. I need to lose like 30 pounds. I just got weighed on that scale. <laughs> that car's like 70 pounds heavy. It's downforce, right? <laughs> but here's the deal. That car is so cool, and it's so special to me, but possible if it wasn't for Don Preston. Don Preston is a name that, you know, the guys that were around in the 70s and 80s and 90s, they know that name. But you know how many national championships Don Preston has? Mm. 32. No. 
Don Preston has been involved in 32 national championships. The first three were my dad. That's crazy. The first three were my dad. Dwayne Davis. He helped Dwayne Davis with the 11 national championships. Wow. Pete Peterson, eight national championships. He has 32. You know, Donnie built atlantic came out or toyota atlantic i think it was called yeah. remember the toyota atlantic series yeah. they had a hundred motors the don to build wow well hold on rob we're going to get back to you after this race but we're going to uh i'm going to send it over to johnny to bring us through to the green flag because we've got some great racing out here and i got a great story about fritz seidel in his 2004 car beer and uh, expect him he's right now in in the first position in group five starting fourth well, as you can see, the cars all now progressing out of turn 18 towards turn 19. The lights are off on the safety car, which means we're going racing here. This is Group 5A, 7 and 11. And I don't mean 7-11, no, I mean 7 and 11. But here we go. We are up against Audi R8s, Panos and Lolas. That's the lead group here. Who will make it up the hill first? I wonder that Audi R8 looking pretty resplendent with the lights on on the right-hand side of your screen. But alongside in the panels of Mark Stratford. And the green flag will wave any moment and they will roar into action here at Cota. And away they go. And a good start by the Audi R8. And that was a splendid start by Travis Engen. Well, he's probably had the most practice of starts today by anybody seems to have been out there in every race so far but another good clean start here for our next group a group 5a 7 and 11 and boys what do you think uh, it's always it's, it's always i'm gonna ask you right, it's, it, all that first corner if you get through there you can kind of just breathe a little right the first <laughs> corner is really pretty tricky i mean everyone needs to stay in their lane and be smart and finish racing there's there's too much to lose at turn one so we all have to be safe out there at turn one. It is by far the scariest uh, part of the race. Well, Fritz Seidel, who I said was going to really move up, he, he f found himself going way back. Robert Hemke, one of our best drivers. We saw him in the Formula Junior 1959 Cooper earlier. He's in a 1971 Lola T212 as Travis Engen, who this is his fourth race we've seen him in, leads to turn 11 over Mark Stratford in the 2006 Panos, followed by Kurt Leverton with Wolf Racing and his Group 7, leading Group 7 in a 1974 Lola from Des Moines, Iowa. Good strong group as they all exit out of 11 and down the long back straight of 12, which she, I'm sure, if I were a racing driver, would feel like it goes on forever. And then suddenly, before you know where you are, you're doing a full workout on the brake panel, diving it into turn 12, and it is full anchors at 12. And if you miss your braking point there, there's no going back, is there? No, and that's just a wedge right there of Kurt Leverton, and then followed by the Radical right there. One of Johnny Cannabis uh, in the 2012 Radical SR8. Radical Cup races with us quite a bit, followed by Robert Hemke in that Lola. And Robert, watch for Robert to move up. He's really fast. He drives the Purple People Eater Minis with us. He's got the Formula Junior. He's been driving momentum cars for years. So once you put somebody from a momentum car into a horsepower car, they're really fast, aren't they, Rob? Well, that's really – that's pretty impressive. You know, for him to go from those different types of cars to this, those other cars lean. These cars have no lean. They are like slot cars. You know, you, I've got my hands full of the dots because the car will lean and it will move all around on me. These look like a lot of fun to drive. I'd like to drive one of these slot cars. Yeah. So that 0-2 right there on the left is Fritz Seidel. Molly Seidel qualified for the 2021 Japan Olympics as a marathon runner, and she's never run a marathon. She's a long-distance runner from Notre Dame, always doing 10Ks. She's a, a Saucony Shoes sponsor, and uh, so during the qualify, she, she ran up. She started 450th, started mid-pack, finished second at Boston, and wow. she's now going to be in the 2021 Olympics <laughs> representing the USA. So we just want to say Molly Seidel, SVRA, loves you. Uh, yeah. Call us. We'd love to put a SVRA logo on anything for a sponsorship. <laughs> yeah. And uh, your dad is fast in a car, and now we're hoping that you're fast in shoes. Yeah. Well, she's proved it already, I think. That's pretty impressive. I was exhausted after eight laps. Yeah. <laughs>
Who wasn't even running? Yeah, so that's Fritz right there and his daughter Molly. We're going to all be cheering for her in the 2021 Olympics in Japan that had to get rescheduled due to COVID. But we've got a good race shaping up here in our group 5, 7, and 11. So to this, but in a group 1 or 3 car, this long straight, you could grab a snack or check your texts. <laughs> you know, it's actually very exciting. I am coming out of that turn in turn one. I'm going I'm going all through the gears. We're turning about 8,700 RPMs at the end of that straightaway. That little Datsun B210, we set the rev lever to 9,000. Now, back and in the day. And it survives? Oh, yeah. Back wow. in the day, they ran those cars up to 9,500. Did they really? Yeah. So uh, we had to change rear ends yesterday, and we had a clutch issue. So we did put a different rear end in, which makes the car but uh, at the end of the straightaway, we're going about 8,700 RPMs and I think probably 130 miles an hour. That's crazy. Look at that DB5 Swift drifting through the all red. That's a 1992 version. As we look high and above, look at these little pockets of battles we've got going on here. Look at this five-way battle coming through the complex, the triple apex, the reverse turkey. And if you know your motor racing, you know what I'm talking about. But the Istanbul circuit, which will be in Formula One next weekend, has a similar corner, which was this was uh, copied from. But it goes the other way. But it's a very, very fast turn eight. And you'll see it in action uh, on ESPN next week. But that's what that is uh, shaped after. And then we head down the straight here at Coda yeah. again. And we're looking at the number 95 of Mark Stratford. This is my favorite part of vintage racing. I think, Rob, you can attest to this because vintage racing is not about winning. It's sometimes the best racing is in mid-pack or the back of the pack, and it's a group of friends that have known each other sometimes for 30 or 50 years, having the time in their lives, living the dream, getting to race at World Class. So very true. These guys are having a really great race right now. There's four or five cars all together. Uh, it is what's what, what's fun. I mean, some of the faster cars just take off, but you do get a lot of mid-pack racing, and... Uh, it is fun, it's clean, and it's safe, and, you know, it's just, uh, it's a whole lot of fun. Speaking of the B210, we've got another one coming. We have the team car coming out next year, the ex-Frank Carney car, tribute car. Frank Carney was the teammate to Dick Davenport. Carney was the founder of Pizza Hut okay. out of Wichita, Kansas. That's heard how, of that. That's yeah. how all this started in Wichita <laughs> nice. back in the day. So we have the team car, and guess who's going to drive it? Oh, Trevor awesome. Carney. Oh. So we're going to have a Davenport in the old Davenport car. We're going to have a Carney in the old Carney car. And we're going to have the team back. That's well, you, right. you got to tell us when you're coming to the first race because we'll make sure we make a feature of it, of oh, our live stream. So if you're watching our live stream right now on our social media channels or app, leave some comments. If you have any questions or if you want to tell us what you'd like to see more or less of, please leave a comment. Rob Davenport finished second in his first race. We hope to see you with a gold helmet. Thank you so much for I joining us. I got a us. silver medal on I my like birthday. It. What are you going to do it's your tonight? Birthday? It's my birthday. Oh, today. happy birthday! Happy birthday, man! I'm 54 years young. There nice. you go. There's hope <laughs> for all of us. What a great way to spend your yeah. birthday, right? Yeah, what are you going to do to the car tonight? I mean, you've got to celebrate your birthday, but we what are, are going to do to the car? We are cooking a. Uh, we're cooking a big uh, beef uh, tenderloin. Oh. We're going to have a little party back at the house. Nice. Well, happy, happy birthday. Thank Congratulations you. Thank on you your much. silver. We want gold tomorrow. There you go. I'll Rob, try you're my awesome, best. man. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye -bye. Thank you, sir. Very good stuff. So that's great. Birthday boy gets the prize, and he's having a beef tenderloin tonight here at the Circuit of the Americas. That couldn't be more Texas. Yeah, that, how cool is that? I didn't even know it was his birthday no, when I, I asked him to come in nice, here. Nice, nice move. Yeah. It's like you planned it. So uh, Travis Engen still in first place in that beautiful He's got a good gap, too. 9.8 seconds now to and, second place and, Mark Strap. So that's who I was talking about earlier. Who's, uh, Travis Engen is in great shape. He's an avid swimmer. But really, I think he's a swimmer because he wants to stay in great shape so he can drive these high G-force cars. Sure. And you do need to be in good shape. These are actually some, some, some of these cars are more demanding than a modern car because there's no, you know, there's no help. You know, like I said, you're stomping on the brake uh, coming into turn 12, and you really are stomping on the brake. There's no ABS. Uh, you've got to do it. Yeah. <laughs> As we watch Jeffrey Anderson come up the hill in his uh, Group 7 U2 1971 Lola T212. Beautiful car. Basically, it looks like a wedge of cheese. That's just a... Like a kind of a sports racer type it's car. It's a Wisconsin car, yeah. is it? Large, thick tires. Yeah, exactly. But it's really fun to watch. We're watching Group 5A, 7, and 11. And coming up, if you're interested in what we've got uh, 
coming up in the future, we've got the MX-5. You don't want to miss that. One of the most competitive championships in America. And then we go into qualifying for the Trans Am series. And I know Trans Am fans have been waiting all day for that. And we look forward to that because I've been talking to some of the guys and it's highly competitive. All four championships are wide open and the MX-5s always put on a great show. And their championship too is one of the most competitive in the United States. So we're looking high above here and Travis Engen at the moment with a very strong lead at the moment over Mark Stratford in the Panos. They started off that way, the Audi R8 LMP, which is, we've talked about marks that have been so successful, like the 458 Ferrari. Well, that Audi R8 LMP in its day was a monster around the world when it came to racing. And Audi had its day for sure. I remember talking to Alan McNish, who was one of the Le Mans drivers for Audi in its heyday. And uh, just couldn't believe that uh, he had arrived in the sports car world when Audi uh, decided to go big and go strong. And they never looked back. And you can hear from the sound of that car, it's absolutely glorious. 2005 version of the LMP. Just planted everywhere it goes. It never looks out of control. Very rarely gets the wiggle on. And if you look at the side of that car, if you come down to the paddock here at the Circuit of the Americas, all the drivers' names, all the wins it's had are on the side of the car. And of course they went into the diesel era as well and they were successful in that. This really was a glorious time for sports car racing for Audi. Uh, they since pulled out of the sports car series, but of course Audi's racing around the world to great success. But I think uh, that era in the mid-90s and on through to the early 2000s and mid-2000s was a, a very successful era for them. Final lap then, and Travis Egan on his way to what will be a dominant victory, and takes the chequered flag, and never looked back from pole position, and look at the gap, it's going to be a while before we see the second man over the line, and that will be the number 95 of the Panos Elan DP02, and here he comes. Mark Stratford then takes the checkered flag in second place. And we're just waiting for third place, Kurt Livington, to come across the line in the Lola T294. As the Audi just drifts through the S's now at slow speed. Lights on, taking the applause of the fans here. As the rest of the field takes the checkered flag here as we finish our group 5A, 7 and 11 first race and our thanks to Herb Brown and Rob Davenport coming in here to join us I'm Jonathan Green and alongside me Ben Sissel who's back in the booth where have you been Ben, what have you been up to? Oh I was just trying to get some sheets and figure out this uh, Mazda race because I tell you what we've been watching practices it is going to be phenomenal yeah it should be good would you say, would it, would it be fair to say, I mean, in historic terms, we, we were talking last time out at VIR about how popular they are, but in modern terms, which is what we're about to see, um, this is like one of the most competitive and uh, popular race series yeah. in America. Mazda has created this platform, the Miata, the MX-5, that is near perfect. And there's a joke in SCCA that the answer is Miata because everybody's like, what should I start in? What should I race? What's the most fun race? What's the most competitive racing? And it seems like the answer is always Miata. And uh, Mazda just did a really good job in my mind in 1989 when the Miata came out. They just took the best of British cars again, like a Sprite or a Lotus Salon, and made it into a nice little affordable roadster. That was the secret, because yeah, that's the entry in the Miatas is really low. And they're really easy to work on, but super reliable. So then, Travis Egan takes the win in the Audi R8, Mark Strafford second, Kurt Leventon in third, Robert Homenke in fourth position, Turnbow in fifth, Fritz Seidel in sixth place, best of luck in the Olympics to his daughter, Johnny Canavas, uh, Canavas 
in seventh, Paul Reed eighth, and Edward Gunther in ninth position. Glenn Bryant rounds out the top ten in the low Lola T88, and that's the top ten for our group 5A7 and 11. Well done to Travis. Busy day. He's going to need some rest at the end of the day if he's going to do it all again tomorrow. But he deserves it. And he certainly knows the track now, if he didn't before. Delighted to say that uh, Travis will be in action again. And we've got more racing to come. As we mentioned, the MX-5 Challenge Series, the Spec Miata Series coming your way. And that will be followed by our qualifying for Trans Am.